Okay, thank you very much, Amir. Um, so I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence in the operating room. Um, we all know that minimal invasive surgery has a lot of uh, significant advantages. Uh, however, we are also aware of the disadvantage of laparoscopic surgery, mainly 2D vision, no palpation, no haptic feedback. It's a non-ergonomic surgery for the surgeon. There's a lot of movement restriction uh, and so forth. And when we started uh, operating with uh, the Da Vinci system, we regained some of the, uh, the, the problems of, uh, of laparoscopic surgery. Mainly, uh, we regained our 3D vision and our dexterity. But the big question is, uh, does it matter for the patient outcome, the robotic surgery? And if we want to answer that, uh, we need to take a, uh, take a look at the evidence, so evidence-based medicine. And there are two uh, large consensus statements uh, in the literature from 2015, uh, which took all the available data by then. And the first one is uh, the consensus statement from the EIES. And uh, their conclusion was actually that uh, there is a little or no advantage in using robotic systems in general surgery in terms of clinical outcome. Uh, the second uh, consensus statement was from SAGES, also from 2015. Uh, um, they did a technology assessment uh, uh, review, and uh, they also came out with this conclusion. Uh, surgical outcomes with the Da Vinci surgical systems are not superior to laparoscopy, and basically they cost more and take more time. So how can we actually improve the clinical outcome of our patients, which this is basically what matters. Uh, so we need a system uh, that is, has a high precision, also has flexible instruments like we've uh, seen by uh, Silvana, has some automatic functions and it could be reproducible. But not only that, we need computer assistance. We need artificial intelligence. And if we have that, uh, we might increase the safety and actually then uh, have a much better cost-benefit uh, ratio. So what is artificial intelligence? It's actually the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior. Uh, and basically, it's decision-making ability and decisions that are made or based on a vast amount of data. And um, we're going to take a look at some examples of an, on recognition software. So we know today that we quite easily can differentiate between uh, animals and uh, instruments, TVs or whatever. We can distinguish between apples and bananas and oranges. And also uh, we can uh, recognize traffic lights and their color and their distance and the meaning of that. Um, and actually, uh, Google has a, a recognition software that can actually uh, determine a scene from a picture. For example, this, uh, it says here, a person riding a motorcycle on a dirt road, or a group of young people playing a game of Frisbee. And this is without any human touch, only computer assistance. And of course, it's not uh, perfect for now. It says here, two dogs playing the grass, but, it, it, but it's three. Uh, however, these things are, will be uh, much better in time. This is a, a, a more difficult uh, question. What is this, a chihuahua or a muffin? So eventually, um, the human will get everything right, but it will take him time. And uh, the computer, actually, uh, with machine learning, will get this right every time, and faster and simultaneously. As humans, we are also... Um, we are um, maybe cold, we're uh, hungry, we're frustrated, so everything uh, is sometimes affects our ability and we make errors. So what do we have uh, with uh, artificial intelligence in, in medicine? Uh, mostly in radiology, this is a startup company from Israel, Medimatch. Uh, they can take uh, CT, brain CT scans and they can detect uh, um, uh, brain intracranial hemorrhage, and actually they do this in the ER, and they, uh, they compare their results to the residents on call, and they show that they have increased accuracy, they have an increased diagnosis speed, basically it's instantly, and this leads to better treatment and better outcome of patients. Uh, Zebra Medical is also a startup company from Israel now, um, uh, already in 50 uh, hospitals all over the world. They can detect um, um, 
pathologies uh, in the chest that can detect uh, uh, coronary artery uh, uh, calcifications, bone density, and, uh, and fractures. And uh, pending are also detection of, liver, of uh, malignant tumors in the breast and so on. And also uh, echocardiography. Um, this is a, uh, also a startup company from Israel, sorry, <clears throat> that can detect um, ejection fraction instantly, faster, better. So why don't we have uh, AI already in surgery? Well, the, the word is that, or the concerns are that computers should not be in charge of human life. Uh, patients don't want to be operated by a robot. Uh, what will happen if there is going to be a technical failure? Uh, if, the use of te if we use more technology, there's more technology that can fail, and it will eliminate jobs and uh, blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, predicting the future is not an easy thing, and, and Thomas Watson, the chairman of uh, IBM in 1943, already said, I think there's a world market for about five, five computers. Uh, but he was not the only one that was wrong. Bill Gates, you know, said uh, 640K ought to be enough for anybody, but we know now that every picture that we take with our smartphone is six times as much. Um, and whoever you know, learns about these things, learns about Moore's Law, and the Moore's Law, we know that uh, the uh, computing power doubles every year and a half. And since its inception in 1958, it doubled 27 times, so we're already in exponential growth. Uh, and just to make, make it understandable, in 1969, NASA uh, managed to land the first man on the moon, and Every one of us has in a pocket, in his pocket, an iPhone or a smartphone, which has much more computing power than the entire NASA's computing power in 1969. So what are the facts? The facts are that AI is already incorporated in our daily lives, and it, it is responsible for human life. Um, there are uh, many transportation systems all over the world that uh, transport uh, people, millions of people, every day, uh, without drivers, AI is responsible for all of that. Uh, Self-driving cars are already in, the, uh, in our streets, and it is anticipated that tens of thousands of lives will be saved by reducing human errors. Take a look at this. This is a cockpit of a Boeing 777 and an Airbus 310. And just tell me, who do you think is flying the plane? A human or, or a machine? Um, sorry. And just take a look at this uh, uh, landing. Uh, this is a landing in difficult uh, uh, wind. And you can see that this maneuver is actually not being done by a, a super duper pilot. It's being done by artificial intelligence. And we know um, that Boeing 777 pilots actually manually control their plane for only seven minutes for flight. And if we're talking about an Airbus plane, it's only 3.5 minutes. So how can we prove our OR with uh, AI? Basically, the easiest thing to do is uh, incorporate it into anesthesia. Uh, this is a snapshot of the monitor that uh, a patient that I operated uh, a while ago uh, for pheochromocytoma, and I had to, every 10 minutes, I had to uh, stop operating and let the anesthesiologist take care of the high blood pressure. And we know how hardworking our anesthesiologists are. Um, but we also know that there are algorithms uh, today uh, that monitor the stock market, and they react fast for every subtle change in the stock market, buying and, and selling stock. Why can't we have this kind of uh, algorithm in our OR, controlling our uh, blood pressure, heart rate, saturation, uh, and so forth? So we do have it. This is a, a system called Cedesis by Johnson & Johnson. Um, and this is exactly what it does. It does it perfectly. However, it was banned by the anesthesiologists themselves, probably because they're afraid for their jobs. Um, so what do we need also in the OR, uh, inside the abdomen? We need some automatic functions. We need smoke evacuations and lead cleaning that will be uh, uh, automatic. And we know that we can recognize when the uh, lens is not cleaned by uh, recognition software. And we also need some blood sectioning that will be automatic when there's bleeding in the, uh, in the field. 
And we can also have an automatic and uh, uh, vessel sealing, and there are several companies that are working now on suturing and, and not tying in an uh, automatic fashion, which is just to make it clear. <laughs> also, um, what we also need is some recognition software that can show us anatomy. And the, the anatomy like this, the cystic duct and the cystic artery, which will help us identify the uh, critical view of safety. And when we clip it, we can know where the common bile duct is. So this will increase our safety in the operating room. Uh, there are problems. Problems with who will be liable. And uh, if there is some complication, who, are, who is going to be sued? The surgeon, the software, the engineer that developed the software. Uh, we still need to work on that. Um, and you need to understand that uh, when a, uh, a computer software sees a picture like this Chihuahua, actually it looks at every pixel, and this is what it sees. It sees like a bunch of ones and zeros. And this data goes into uh, neural networks, which are predefined for this. And then the output is, is what we get, the, uh, the image recognition. But we really don't know what's happening in those neural networks. We have no idea how it works. Uh, we know how to define it pre uh, before we, uh, uh, we let the software deal it, but we don't know how to regulate it. Uh, and this is why the FDA currently has no guidelines uh, and does not know how to regulate uh, and does not have a path for uh, artificial intelligence. But uh, uh, we are optimistic because they start giving FDA approvals for the radiology uh, startups that we already saw. So in order to improve uh, the patient's outcomes, uh, we need uh, surgical systems that not only enable uh, the surgeons to have better motor control, but also systems that will augment the surgeon's thinking. And uh, how do we get there? Uh, of course, step by step, and each step we just need to make sure uh, that we uh, maintain the safety of our patients. Thank you.